Welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. The three keys to your success is just moments away. Here's your host, Brian Kelly. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. We are so glad you could join us tonight. We have an amazing show. I cannot wait, cannot wait for you to meet our special guest tonight, Heather Hawkins. She's amazing. She's going to rock it. You are going to hear some amazing stories of people she's met, of her brilliance and how what she has learned in business, what has made her the raging success that she is. Before we jump into that, and it will be very, very soon, I promise, the Mind Body Business Show. What is that all about? For those of you that are here for the first time, maybe the second or third, you just don't remember, mind is all about mindset. It is about an empowering, positive, flexible mindset. And what I noticed over the course of several years, many years of studying only successful people, is that successful people have three patterns, three patterns that they've developed. Uh, it was this common pattern that kept bubbling up every time I ran into a successful person. And they have a very positive and flexible mindset. In addition to that, they also take care of their body. They'll take care of their body. They just do. They take care of the body both externally through exercise, which is also internal, and through nutrition by feeding themselves the fuel that their body wants and deserves. And then there's business. Oh, my. That is a multifaceted area where we're talking about marketing, sales, team building, systematizing, leadership. The list goes on and on, and it can be a daunting list. The good news is you personally don't have to master every skill set in business. All you need to do is bring in those and delegate. That's the leadership part to those who do have those skill sets that are in their swim lane, so to speak. And so Mind Body Business, the Mind Body Business Show, that's what this is all about. It is to find out what makes successful people like Heather tick. What is it about this young lady that has taken her to superstardom in a very short period of time? And you, you, you're going to love the people she has worked with. It's, it's an amazing laundry list of, of beautiful people. Uh, and another wonderful thing I've noticed about very successful people is they also seem to be very avid readers. And it's interesting because when I first started this trek, I did not read at all. <laughs> and so this is going back over a decade, just to make that clear. Uh, and I then since became a very voracious reader. And so what we're going to do real quickly is segue into a segment I call bookmarks. Bookmarks. Born to read. Bookmarks. Ready. Steady. Read. Bookmarks. Brought to you by ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. There it is. You see ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. And for those of you watching or listening, do yourself a favor and take out a sheet of paper or a pad and a pen and take notes. I personally take notes every single show. I'm running everything. I am the director, the producer, the, the talent, well, that's debatable, and running this whole thing from one spot. And I'm taking notes, so there's no excuse for anyone else not to. So please do that rather than when you hear a resource, because I know Heather's going to have a wealth of value to offer you, uh, like reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Don't you know, resist the temptation to go to the sites and, and the websites and the resources that you're hearing about. Don't go off to Google. Stay with your notepad, because here's the thing. The magic happens in the room, and this is a virtual room. If you are off researching, looking, you, you've done it before, I've done it before, your mind will go with it. And if you do, you may miss that one thing that Heather says that could literally have changed your life forever. And I am not kidding about this. I've done a lot of these shows, and there have been some amazing, valuable nuggets that have gone on through each. All right, reachyourpeaklibrary.com, real quick. As you saw on the screen, it's not about reading, just about reading books, but about reading the right books. And so what I did was after I started uh, reading voraciously, as I began you know, realizing that, you know what, it could take someone some time to hunt down good books that are good for feeding their mind, for helping them with their skill sets, for helping personal development, everything that helps you in fitness as well, everything that helps you with becoming successful, more successful than you are today. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to start filling up a website full of the books that had impact on me, positive impact. 
So not every book I've ever read is in this list. In fact, I'm actually probably 30 or 40 uh, behind <laughs> in here of those books that did give me a uh, uh, some great positive impact. I just finished one a moment ago uh, earlier today. It was amazing. It will be on this list. Uh, but this I literally did, I, I kid you not, for you. The entrepreneur, even if you have attained a super high level of success, and success is a very interesting word in its own, right? We all uh, have different interpretations of that. But no matter what your level of success, you can always find other resources to take you to that next level. And so this may be one of those great resources for you. Just find one book, pick it, the first one that, that really leaps off the page to you, and read it, and then go back and do another one. So that is there for you. And you know who else is here for you? That's right, it's the one and only Heather Hawkins. She's coming on right about now. It's time for the Guest Expert Spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen. The one, the only, Heather Hawkins. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Quite an intro. Quite an intro. I'm like, check, okay, check, okay. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It, it was like I read your mind. It was exactly you to a T, every one of those. Yeah. Well, Fantastic. Oh, we're going to have so much fun. Uh, Heather, you have such a wonderful personality. You're, you're, you're obviously beautiful. You're, you are great for the screen for sure. And the most important part, though, for everyone listening is this woman's acumen, her background, her, her experience, her results. That's the bottom line. And so before we dive in and I introduce you to her formally, I want to remind everyone who's watching or listening, mostly watching live right now, that if you stay on to the very end, you get a chance at a five-star luxury resort in Mexico. And that's for a five-night stay. And this is all compliments of our wonderful buddies over at powertexting.com who offer this vacation. We give one away every single show. I love what I get to do. Um, and so go ahead and stick with us all the way to the end. I will, re I will reveal how you can enter to win that and we'll just have some fun. Sound good? All right, Heather Hawkins. For the past 20 plus years, she has been helping some of the world's best known brands use Earn Media Visibility, catapult their relevance and impact. She's worked with Sony, listen to this list, Sega, Cliff, Cliff Bar, sorry, divisions of Apple, oh my, even, here we go, David Bowie, I'm not kidding, and Maroon 5. Wow, that is impressive. And now she's opening the vaults, leveling the playing field, and teaching her proven systems to entrepreneurs just like you so you can build the kind of wildly visible personal brand that demands attention. I am loving every single word of this. She's the founder of Elevation Strategy and creator of Elevation Visibility Academy. And she's here to help you catapult your personal brand with earned media visibility. Whew. All right, that's our show for tonight. Thank you for joining. Bye, With guys. Thanks. <laughs> Heather Thanks. Hawkins, welcome to the show. Hello Thank you so Mexico. much. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, let, let's all go, right? <laughs> let's just do it. You know, take all past guests or experts up through you and just go, all of us. We're all going. Power texting, take us away. <laughs> now, that was a very powerful bio, and we are definitely going to dig in a little bit on some of those uh, tidbits, as you probably would expect, right, Heather? I'm sure I, I won't be the first to ever ask you uh, about a couple of those um, experiences you've had. Uh, yeah. But what I'd like to do at this moment is, you know, that's a very phenomenal background um, and it gives people a great um, uh, instant of what you are, what you've done, what you've accomplished from an outer viewpoint. I like to get into the inner viewpoint to find out what makes people like you, successful people like you, tick, so to speak. And, you know, how do you think? Um, how do you go about your day? What is it about you that makes you successful versus someone who hasn't achieved success yet? And I do this with each guest expert, and it's amazing uh, how each one and the pattern seems to fit all the way every single time with differences because we're all individual people. And so you are, I could tell the moment I first met you and we literally just met 20 minutes before we went on the air for all those watching. 
uh, that you are an extremely positive individual. You have incredible energy. Uh, you came on with a big old smile on your face as soon as the camera lit up. Uh, so how do you do that? How do you maintain that positive, productive, and successful mindset day in and day out? Uh, and how do you do? How do you sustain that over and over and over, day after day? How does that happen? Besides drinking lots of liquid. Drinking lots of liquid. I live <laughs> in the mountains, and it's kind of dry up here. Um, you know, I believe it's a choice. I believe it's a choice and a habit, and we all can decide. You know. Do we want to look at something? I saw the obstacles away came up on your um, reading library. I I love his books. Um, I read the Daily Stoic almost every morning, just a passage from it, and it's it's a choice. Like we can either decide, are we going to let things get us down, or are we going to choose to look at the positive in things? And you know, we're all entrepreneurs here. You know. I have investigated wormholes and taken some cul-de-sacs and turnabouts. And it's the choice to just wake up and decide that you're going to keep on sharing your gift with people. But I also think it goes back to knowing what your gift is and knowing no matter what the end result looks like. So no matter what the product is, it's it's who you are and it's the DNA, you know, brand DNA, personal DNA, your mission, your goals that you bring to the table that keep you getting up every day and keep you smiling even when it seems like things are going crazy and then realizing sometimes that's the biggest gift when things go a little bit sideways. Wow, I can so relate, especially to when you said knowing what your gift is. That, that is like right between the eyes and the reason I say that is because very recently, uh, as little as four or five months ago, I completely shifted my, my business from a fitness business as a personal trainer to mm -hmm to Geekville, which is automation and uh, the back end software systems, things like that, completely different. But that was the reason why uh, a, a series of events occurred that helped me realize right between the eyes once again, that my core competency lied in technology and actually yeah. creating the technology and putting technologies together. And it was amazing when I made that transition, the, the happiness that exuded after that was immense. I had no idea, I, I love fitness. I love working out. I love helping people more than anything. That's the real reason. Uh, but I found it wasn't my true passion. And once I found it, holy smokes, I enjoy every single moment of every single day more than I did before. So you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. And I just want to kind of highlight that for people that might be searching right now. It's, it's a process. It's a searching process. And you may, the best feedback I got, uh, Heather, was from other people. You know, those closest to me, dear friends who would tell me the truth, my wife, oh, thank goodness, I'm so blessed. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm now 55 years old, I'm, I'm starting over in business, but I feel like a newborn. I'm so excited. So why not have a great, you know, life even well into your 50s, 60s and beyond? Why not? I'm yeah. enjoying it. Yeah, I once heard somebody say, um, nothing is a failure, it's all data, right? So it sounds like that was, you got some data and it helped you make a change. Funny thing, I actually, I'm a certified personal trainer as well, just because I love learning, I love the human body. And now I specialize in something called transformative technology, which is the application of technology to health and human well-being and mental health and, and all of these things. And it's amazing the similarities between the habits that you have to develop, the systems you have to develop to be a fit person yes. um, and it doesn't take any more work once you figure out the habits and the systems, right? And so I can totally see how those systems you teach people to do in a fitness setting absolutely transition to the fitness or the habits and the systems that you want people to set up in a business setting. Yeah, and it, it oh, so much came from mindset. It's amazing people don't think that when it comes to physical fitness, but the mind plays a bigger role than the body because if the mind isn't there, you're not gonna, go, you're not gonna work out. You're not gonna eat the right yeah. way. You're not gonna drink the right way. And so, yeah. yeah, everything about that. And I used to say, you know, this is, I, I, I still use this metaphor to this day because now it's a metaphor since I'm no longer doing it. But if you have a client and they're, it, we're calling for 10 push-ups. Let's say we're doing an exercise. Um, let's do 10 push-ups. And let's say she only could do five or he only could do four. I'm not going to be uh, sexist here. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's what happens when that, that individual gets up from that position of not being able to complete 10. What are they doing? They're beating themselves to pieces mentally because they didn't achieve the goal. And I look at them and say, what are you doing? 
Well, I didn't finish. I didn't, I didn't reach the goal. I said, look, did you give it everything you had? Well, yeah, I couldn't go any farther. Then here, listen, instead of kicking yourself in the butt for the reps you couldn't complete, reach around literally, I make them do this or used to, pat yourself on the back and say, good job for the reps you did do because you gave it everything you got. You know, the goal will happen. You just got to keep doing it, discipline. And so uh, I instill that into all of my team, uh, into clients, everybody, just to keep that positive mindset because whatever you've done is taking you closer to the end goal. Whether you achieve the goal you set for yourself or someone else set for you isn't really the important part right at that moment. Yeah, I just got done reading Atomic Habits and he talks in that book about um, how we have confirmation bias around goals. Like everybody that goes into the NFL season has a goal of winning the season, right? So when the person wins and they say it was our goal to win, we're like, oh, it must be about the goal, but it's not. It's about every single play, every single second, every single choice. Um, you know, it's about how many times, even if like it's going back to doing the push-ups when you don't necessarily want to, it's, it's choosing to do it time and again versus like the goal. I think we're too goal focused sometimes. I, I agree. And uh, to your point about failure, it's about it. It's not failures. It's learnings. We're learning. We're knowing that worked. That didn't. That didn't. That didn't. That didn't. That did. There's a lot more didn'ts than did. If you didn't notice that, those of you watching, listening, because that's just the way it works. You got to have resolve and discipline, which is, I think, what Heather is really nailing down is, a, you know, discipline, doing something over and over. Like in fitness, you have to start a habit was her word. Uh, a habit. I, I like the word discipline because it's the same thing. Develop the discipline and keep at it. Uh, that's another thing I see uh, very successful people like yourself. They have you know routines when they get up or when they go to bed or both or even during the middle of the day, but they're always disciplined. And mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about physical fitness and you're a personal trainer. And so I'm guessing physical fitness you think is important also to yourself, not just other people you're helping. Uh, how is it affecting not only yourself, but your business and your personal life? How important? Yeah. Um, so I got my personal trainer certification in 2008, just as a, a self-learning kind of a thing. I was actually working in technology and I got laid off for the third time because people really like to lay off people that work in technology. <laughs> um, and I kind of said, what am I really passionate about right now? And I was a marathoner at the time, was getting ready to move up to the trail ultra distance. And I just really wanted to learn about it and, and wanted to have that education. Um, when I decided to go back into PR, spoiler alert, that's what I do for a living is PR. I know we haven't gotten there yet, but um, when I decided to go back into PR, I took all that learning from um, the personal trainer certification and I became head, head of agency accounts for Cliff Bar, which is you know, huge organization working in all these endurance sports that I loved so much. And they really needed somebody who could bring together the science of performance, along with this really consumer brand focus, ability to get inside the head of the consumer and figure out how to build a real passion brand around what they were doing. Um, and I also worked with Camelback at that time. And then two years ago, I picked up my family and I moved from San Francisco up to the hills outside of Lake Tahoe, California. So mm -hmm. I live in the mountains now. Um, and I started my own agency, Elevation Strategy, which is focused on the human performance space. So I work with nutrition gear um, and a real passion of mine right now is transformative technology, which is the application of technology to the pursuit of health and happiness and mental well-being. And it could be anything from a crazy headset that blasts magnetic rays into your brain to help you get to the theta waves of a Buddhist monk who's been meditating for like 50 years, or something as simple as that mindfulness app that you might have on your cell phone that helps you gamify mindfulness and just helps make these concepts a little bit more accessible to everybody, really. I love that whole concept. I, I love that stuff. I, I, I get it all. I, I listen to it. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm deep into that as well. That's so cool. We have so much in common. It's crazy. I'm standing on a, a uh, earthing pad at this very moment. Oh, I love it. I'm, I love it. I'll, 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 this is the first time I've ever said this live on the air. I'm going to give a secret out. I'm literally barefoot right now. <laughs> I am. You have to be, or yes. you have to have copper bolts that go up through your shoes and make contact with your skin. <laughs> <laughs> or they're, they're, yeah, or they're pounded through yep. your feet. 
Yes. Yeah, I'm actually barefoot too, but it's just because I just came back from a long run and my shoes smelled. So I took <laughs> my shoes off. That's the other thing. Successful entrepreneurs are very honest. <laughs> Why not? Trent, you know, that's, it's beautiful, you know, um, being transparent. That is actually a very huge quality of successful entrepreneurs and business people are those that are not afraid to let people under, you know, into their, not every moment of their life, but know that they're not perfect, that know that yeah. they might have stinky shoes. That's great. My feet are horrendously smelly when my shoes, we could do a whole show now on smelly feet and talk <laughs> about, no, we won't. But it's, it's awesome that uh, you all obviously have that air of transparency. Uh, again, another trait of a successful individual. And I want to get to that is, uh, you know, you, you were working with some pretty high named businesses and individuals. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd love for you to uh, recap that story we were going through real quick because um, we know we just lost a wonderful person and musician, David Bowie, not long ago. Yeah. And uh, in talking to you just before the show, I found out you worked with him literally physically. So would you mind telling that quick story? Yeah. And, you know, fast forward a tiny bit, my daughter, um, who's now three, she was born a week and a half after he passed and wow. she was born to life on Mars and she's quite a character. Wow. So <laughs> wow. I'm, I have no doubt she got a little bit of the Duke. Um, so yeah, I started my career in video games and I was working for a company called IDOS Interactive at the time. IDOS was publishing a game with David Bowie called Omicron, The Nomad Soul. And we were doing a big press conference at E3 in Los Angeles and David Bowie, we were we met up first um, at the bar that was attached to the place where the press conference was happening. And David was standing there with his wife, Iman is his wife, yeah? So big height difference between those two. And he was leaning against the bar, kind of hiding in the background, all the mucky mucks, all his mucky mucks were in front of him. All my um, company mucky mucks were in front of us. And they were doing the, the handshaking thing, walking down the aisle, walking down the line. And I was kind of standing in the background because I was a PR person, like it wasn't about me. I was holding a clipboard and doing whatever. But I also happened to have blue hair and a nose ring, which I think made me a little bit more noticeable than average. And he actually stood up from his bar stool, parted the mucky mucks to reach out his hand and shake my hand. Um, so we had that little opportunity to connect, which was awesome because minutes later, when I was running up the backstage ramp in front of him and Reeves Gabrell and tripped and completely yard sailed myself onto the floor of the ramp, I was like, ha, yeah, sorry, just totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't heard that before. He yard sailed my house. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. He was, yeah. I really enjoyed working with him. He was, he was very down to earth. Oh, that's that's so cool to hear. And then uh, um, Maroon Five. What what did you, what was your relationship with them? Did you get to meet them as well, or work from the, work yeah. from afar? Wow, no kidding. Yeah, no. Um, so I was living in New York City. Um, I, I was working in video games and then, um, Sega Dreamcast was the big, um, console launch, which we just celebrated the 20 year anniversary of <laughs> like a week ago, um, moved to New York city, which had always been a dream of mine to do music marketing. And I got put on my desk one day, a CD and a headshot of the most glamorous made up. <laughs> I think one of them was literally wearing a Seinfeld pirate shirt in the headshot. And this was in uh, 2002. So the tail end of the boy band boom, everybody wanted to be listening to real music and, and people were, you know, Backstreet Boys had broken up and Britney was a couple months away from her umbrella incident with the paparazzi. Um, and so we worked with them before the launch of their first album. And our real message to them, it goes back to something you were just talking about and something that's core to my business was about radical authenticity and how, you know, you guys don't need to market yourself in this way that's not authentic to you because you could tell once you met them that they didn't want to, you know, they weren't a glam band. They were down to earth. They were, they're great musicians. And so we made the choice in working with them that for one year, we would not let them do, you know, it was, it was amongst all of us. We made an agreement for one year, they will not do anything that reeks of boy band because if they had at that time, they would have ended up completely being a flash in the pan. And we said, you know, just so you know, this means if Young Miss Magazine calls and wants to put you on the cover, 
we say no to that. We ship them off. Um, so everybody who owns a Jeep gets together once a year and does like this Jeep jamboree thing. We ship them to the Sam Adams Pier Festival. We basically said, where would a music first jam band type of a place, type of band be playing? And we actually did get that phone call from Young Miss Magazine, wanted to do Maroon 5 Takes You to Prom, like six months after. And we said no to it. Um, because again, it goes back to knowing who you are, being radically authentic to that is going to get you so much further than saying what's hot right now. You know, let me be what's hot right now. Yeah. And I have, when I start working with entrepreneurs and solo entrepreneurs, a lot of times they come to me and, and I'm like, okay, tell me about yourself. And they, I've literally had people say, you tell me what I need to be in order to make it right now. You tell me what I you tell me how I should position myself. You tell no, you know, it goes back to who are you so that you can build a business that you love. So if I told you that you need to be friends with Brian Kelly and Tim Ferriss and you need to hang out in Austin and New York City and you need to and that's and you want to live in the mountains like me, right? you're gonna be miserable, even if you build a successful business and, and you just don't wanna be in that scene. If you don't wanna be an Instagram influencer, if you don't wanna you know, have to do lives, it's like build a business where selling doesn't feel like selling, build a business where your radical authenticity is what makes you unique and what makes you valuable. And that doesn't mean blue hair and a nose ring. Since I had that for a while, people think that that's what I mean when I say radical authenticity. No, you know, it could mean barefoot on a grounding pad with a, <laughs> you know, tinfoil hat on if, that, if that's kind of what you're about, right? Where, put that? <laughs> Where is my tinfoil hat? Um, so I think that Maroon 5 was probably my first strongest lesson in it is not true that all PR is good PR. Um, it is true that who you are is what's going to make you last. And it's mm. true that who you are is not going to change no matter how many experiments, wow. no matter how many things you try and quote unquote fail at or decide to pivot away from, you know, it's the core of you that's always being built throughout that process. Man, and now that is wisdom right there, ladies and gentlemen, because you, you are hitting everything on the head. So many people will sacrifice literally themselves for fame or, or fortune, usually the fortune part, uh, in search of success. And the mm -hmm. thing is, is when they reach what they're calling success at that moment, like you said, they're miserable because they're not their authentic self. That is so true because the whole reason we as entrepreneurs do what we do is so we can be hit that point of liberation to do what we want, when we want, where we want, under our own terms. And why not start now and do that, yeah. you know, make it authentic to you, the business from day one. And what does that mean? That means you're going to have to turn some people away. And people don't like to do that inherently. Uh, but once you learn that skill and once you've done it a couple of times and you realize this is good for my, not only my business, but for me. Uh, and I got to look out for number one. It's not being selfish. It's getting higher, faster, so you can serve more people that are a fit with you because, you know, Spoiler alert, you're not going, you don't have a business that's right for everyone. How many times have we heard that? Who do you serve? Yeah. Oh, everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's funny. I was coaching somebody in the, in the Tahoe startup showcase um, last week. We have a pretty booming startup community up here by Lake Tahoe. And it was an outdoors company. And they said, so, you know, there are 35 million Americans who get outdoors once or twice you know, a year and we're really focused on these people, blah, 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 blah. And then also there are all those people who never get outside and we really are also solving. It's like, okay, so now your avatar is every single stinking person in the United States. <laughs> like the problems you're solving have gone from really well-defined ones with, with research behind it to like Martha hates bugs and Martha doesn't want to get her <laughs> shoes dirty. So how do you solve Mar Martha's problem? Like you can't build a, a product for everyone. You can't market a product to everyone. And and those real passion brands, you know, those passion brands start out by saying, we are talking to you. And the people that come in in the beginning come in and they come in passionately because they, they know, you know, we did this with Sega Dreamcast where we literally went into cities and drew swirls on the sidewalk, nothing else. So that gamers would see that they would know 
that is Sega, that is Sega talking to me. And all their friends were like, what the heck's this swirl? And they're like, I know what that swirl is. So that's how you kind of get that passion and you include people basically in the marketing by getting so hyper specific that they feel like you're inside their head um, and talking directly to them. Absolutely, yeah. And you know, like gamers, you know, you're not gonna, if you're looking to sell games, video games, most likely, uh, you know, moms that have teenagers are probably not in your market, even though everyone's going to try to sell to everyone that's out there. And so it's very important. You said the word avatar. It's very important to know that avatar, to uh, get very clear on who that avatar is and market all your messaging to that person. I'm preaching to the choir. I'm talking to the PR yeah. expert here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because I'll, I'll say when I do brand build outs with people, they come to me and they say, I know having an avatar is super important, but I'm different. And let me tell you why <laughs> I, I shouldn't have an avatar. And I'm like, no, you still need an avatar. <laughs> okay, so I help businesses who want to grow. You don't have an avatar. <laughs> like, are you helping early stage businesses? Are you helping big businesses, small businesses, online businesses, in person businesses, local businesses, women led, but like, what kind of businesses? like you have to get more specific oh i work with entrepreneurs what kind of entrepreneurs ones who want to scale and get investment or ones who want to be solopreneurs or like you have got to give it a more specific but i find that people are educated on the fact that they need an avatar and then they come to me and want to tell me why they they don't need one you need one everybody needs one yeah there, there's always resistance to that step um yeah because it's very difficult to put in one's mind that, look, we know that you're not going to sell to just one person, but your messaging needs to be as if. And it's kind of like a whole mind shift that they need to go through. And I remember the first time I went through that exercise, same thing happened. I'm like, ugh, this is hurting. I don't know how to do this. Uh, where do they live? How much do they make? Where do they hang out? What restaurants? I don't know. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then you, you just go through the process and you figure it out. And then once you do, you can always change your avatar if it's not perfect that first time, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you're messaging, and it's all about the messaging, it doesn't mean if a mom with four teenagers wants to buy the game, it doesn't mean you just, nope, you can't have it. No, yeah, you still you're take it. Yeah, not excluding anybody. <laughs> right. I mean, honestly, what you wanna do is have that avatar be so specific that those people are so passionate about your business that they bring you the next ring and that next ring working inside out might have anybody in it. You know, if if your product is for female entrepreneurs and you're really targeting females and somebody's buddies, you know, business buddies with a guy and says, you really need to go to this woman or you need to go to this guy to help you. Are you going to turn them away? I mean, you're it's not like you're saying you're not allowed, like it's the chicks only, no dudes club. Um, but it's just a way of creating that kind of passion with people. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that because that's what, that's the resistance where everyone comes from. Yeah, but I can serve so many people. Don't worry, it'll happen. As long as you yeah. keep following, you know, keep, keep focusing on the course, let's get that avatar to find. Yeah. Uh, so you did a lot of uh, work with some pretty prominent people and, and then you broke out on your own? Is that how it worked? Yeah. So what yeah. sparked that? I mean, what caused you to then break out on your own and start your own gig? Yeah. Um, so I had been, I mean, it's a couple things. One big slice of it was lifestyle. So I have two young daughters. I have now a four-year-old and a six-year-old or a three-year-old and a six-year-old and they're both about to turn four and seven as one does when one is four and six. <laughs> and um, I was living in San Francisco. I was the vice president of an agency. I mentioned that I had been running the Cliff and Camelback accounts. Um, and the San Francisco had just changed so much. I mean, the, the lifestyle was such that, so Cliff Bar and Camelback moved on. They both decided to get different agencies. It happens in the agency world all the time. We'd been with them with, for eight years, which is an impossibly long time for anybody to stay with one agency. And when they left, I was forced, you know, faced with the choice of having to grow a significant amount of business within that agency. And the agency minimums 
you know, were high. And the people that I wanted to work with were kind of upstarts. And the, these smaller, I talk about transformative technology, human performance, you know, a pair of socks, you know, in Gingy, my favorite sock company, is not ever going to be able to afford a, a big city agency minimum. And so, you know, the thinking was, do I go back to trying to pitch technology slash video game companies who might have a little bit more money? Or do I really want to focus on this thing that is my passion? And that combined with the fact that San Francisco had just kind of jumped the shark for me. I had been there for 24 years total um, in San Francisco, with the exception of that one year in New York, which was one year to the day <laughs> that I lived in New York City. Um, it, within a week, I realized that, um, what does Tim Ferriss call it, geo-arbitrage. I realized that this place that I love in Truckee, California, near Lake Tahoe, the cost of living is lower. There's a lot of second homes. I could send my kids to public school. I could take a shot at building this agency that could serve these smaller, more upstart companies that couldn't meet a big city agency minimum. Um, so literally, I went from a Monday thinking that I would never leave San Francisco to Friday being like, we're moving to Truckee. Um, and we had spent time up here seasonally, so we knew the area. And it's been great. I mean, it, I look around myself every day, just flabbergasted by how gorgeous it is here and how, how little it's impacted my business, really. Because um, I can work with people on Zoom. We also have a booming startup community down in Reno. So I'm getting more involved in that. Um, it's one of those moments, again, the obstacle is the way, like that job going away, other, if that hadn't happened, I would still be in San Francisco plugging away. Um, the day after it happened, I was looking at the jobs that were available to me and it was all like, you know, vice president of worldwide PR for some third round angel funded startup thing that would have me on a plane every week, every weekend. And I didn't want to do that with my kids. So it ended up being just a, a absolutely beautiful confluence of things that you might think were bad that turned out to be perfect. Isn't it cool how that so often happens in life? It's amazing. When you're going through it, you're thinking, this is horrible. And then you get to the other side, like, that was pretty awesome. I'm glad that happened. Like, that was perfect. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't have yeah. happened any better. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so one of the things, uh, so we, we've covered mind, we've covered some body, we've covered some cool stories uh, with mm -hmm. Bowie and Maroon 5 and, and you starting your own business, moving in a weekend, making the decision to, to get up and go. And now that you have been doing your own thing for some time, you know, one of the things we all talk about as entrepreneurs is how marketing is the lifeblood of one's business. And mm -hmm. so, yes, we're segueing into the business realm of mind body business. And, you know, without marketing, there is no business. I mean, without successful marketing. And the thing is, marketing is so multifaceted. There are so many ways to market. Um, and the only thing I'm interested in when I talk to successful people like yourself is what did you find that was successful for you? I don't care about all the other things we've read about. I've read about many, but what worked for you? What would you say was your number one best approach at marketing? What form of marketing works best for you? Yeah, this is interesting because it actually has to do with that whole pivot and, and you know experimentation that I did earlier in this year. So the thing that works best for me, um, hands down, number one, working my network, staying in touch with people who I've done awesome work with, referrals, number one. Um, number two, getting involved in my local community, mm -hmm. even though I am largely an online, like I work with most of my clients remotely. Um, but the things that I do in the local community helps to get the word out. It gives me content to share on LinkedIn. If I share about, you know, mentoring a group at a, at a startup pitch fest, whatever, um, it just gives me stuff to talk about and keeps me relevant. And also I'm the kind of person who, even though I love living in the mountains, um, I also crave that contact. Like I, when I leave these meetings with these startups at these pitch fests, I'm on fire. So I do my job better the next day. I connect better with people the next day. So that's, that's essential to me. Number three, hands down has been being a guest on podcasts, mm. um, being a guest on shows like this as well. Um, it's something that I believe in 
so strongly. Um, so I help people get earned media visibility, which includes an awful lot of things. And I had a client last year, we placed them in the ideal article in the Associated Press, literally. Like there was no editorial um, curmudgeon ness at all, no editorial skepticism, perfect article. I placed them on a podcast that same week that was so small that we had to tell the CEO it was a practice podcast to get him to show up. We told him it was a warm up podcast. Um, Associated Press got them pats on the back, high fives from people they already knew that were already in their network. That podcast got them three hot new business leads. Mm. And this was a really high end sports technology. Two of those leads closed within 30 days after the podcast to the tune of $230,000 of recurring annual revenue. And the, the other one was about to close in that quarter. So podcasts, people show up ready to engage. People show up ready to take notes. You just told everybody to take notes and write it down. Um, the blessing about it is if you're overwhelmed with what you need to be doing in your business, you show up, you provide value, you provide massive value. Um, and then lovely people like yourself <laughs> produce it and market it and share it with their networks yep. and give you that platform. So as soon as you can identify what value you bring, you can start being a guest on a podcast. And, and it's one of the most action driven, um, hugely, um, you know, every time I'm on a podcast, I watch my email list numbers tick up. I get people hitting me up on Facebook Messenger or elsewhere wanting to connect, highly engaged people wanting to connect. So those would be my three. Fantastic. And it's an interesting, um, it, it happened, gosh, not quite a year ago when one of my past guest experts who was on the show uh, came on and talked about after the show is over, the importance of podcasting, and, and I was almost blown away. I'm thinking that's a very, very old concept, podcasting. I mean, come on, really? He goes, oh, Brian, yeah. I said, oh my gosh, I'm missing a big market then. And instantly I was researching everything there was about podcasts. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, so this show is repurposed into a podcast, an audio only yeah. podcast and it gets put onto 15 podcasting platforms roughly a half hour after we're done talking uh, tonight, Heather. It will be up on all yeah. these different platforms uh, yeah. because I learned how important that was and I just dug in. I said, I'm gonna find out how to blast this to the world. Uh, yeah. It's on nine platforms right now, streaming simultaneously live. Uh, just, just everything and anything I can do to spread the word about you because this show is about my, my guest experts. I just love interacting. Uh, you give such great value, Heather. You are absolutely no exception in that area. My goodness, uh, it's it's over the top. And podcasting—that's the one. The one of those. And you also mentioned showing up. Personal relationships is really what I got out of yeah. that. That is yeah. also have. It's come back full circle. Uh, we go through these cycles, like much like real estate. What works in marketing and what doesn't. It not long ago, personal relationships. You didn't have to develop those as tightly as you do today. Now it's yeah. back to we need person. We need the touch because now yeah. everyone's gotten so disconnected with social media and internet and Zoom and all these online things, which are awesome. But when you're physically with somebody, uh, the energy is different and it has a bigger impact. So yeah. everything just hitting on the mark from what uh, I've been witnessing as well. Two quick things on that. Yeah. Um, number one, I believe that what you're doing here is actually the wave of the future. I believe that podcasts are going to start getting more video because it's so nice to just see somebody, to see their face, to hear them talking. There are things you can do on video. So I, you know, I do think that this is more the, the wave of where it's going, but podcasts are not, not, not going anywhere. Um, the second thing that I wanted to say as it relates to that dip that I talked about, that experimentation that I did was all marketing automation. It was all figuring out how to build funnel pages or figuring out how to do lead magnets or figuring out how to do, I was telling you before we hopped on that I had a really horrible string of Zoom webinars that I was trying to do. Um, and I had a coach that was sitting there going, Heather, you have to do this. Like you have to talk about the you know cost of not doing the thing. And, you need to, and he's like hitting me up on my cell phone and I'm just trying to connect with people. And he's like, you need to ask the next question in the five question close to get the, and I just like, ah, and I got off that last webinar. And that's when I had that aha moment that I do not want to build a business that I have to inauthentically sell or that the selling process feels 
this bad or that I have to change who I am in order to say the right words, in order to have the right emotional thing to get the people to do the stuff. But it, it ultimately what it bubbles down to, I think, is I don't want to have an automated marketing system. I want to connect with a person. My, my business is built in such a way that I do a couple of group things just because I want to help as many people as I can. But other than that, my business is built in such a way that it can be one on one connections. And it's because that's what I love. So I don't necessarily want to have 350 people that are active with a program with me at any given time because I can't provide the kind of personal attention. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of it for me ends up being psychology as I help people figure out their brand strategy and their brand platform. Yeah, it's a very corporate thing that we're doing there, but it's psychology because I have to sell you on yourself. I have to pull out of you who you really are. I have to crystallize it in a way that's repeatable. And I have to make it so that when I show it to you, you get chills from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes and you stick with it for the next life of your business for the for the next life of as long as you're an entrepreneur and that to me is is part intuition part psychology and then part um you know statistics and market research and hard stuff and where do you fit and how how do you kind of match up with the competition but i don't feel like i can do that for you know 523 people at one time Right. Yeah. Not unless you scale. And, and to do that, you need to basically get others that have the knowledge that you have, uh, the training that you have. the And, and that can be daunting, depending on the skill set, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I love what you said about uh, marketing automation, um, because it does come down to the physical touch and not literally, but, you know, to one on one, be able to talk to people as much as possible. And then as you're scaling more and more uh, or less and less of that is possible only because there's only one you and again scaling becomes important and the reason i'm hitting those a couple of times is marketing or automation in general is an absolute necessity to run your business from the you know under the hood and you you've been privy to that from all of the automation you've uh, received from me personally uh that yeah. most of was automated a couple of personal emails shot in there uh, i automate the bejeebers out of my business so that i don't have to work on it or in it and i now can work on it um, yeah. I just recently automated an entire interview process. I have a one hour application. They go through lots of video, uh, not lots, five or six videos, actually seven, <laughs> seven videos. Uh, and they, I, I, lay, I lay down the law and are you still okay to continue? Are you, do you agree with this? I ask them questions. It's all captured on a form. Uh, at the end, I have them create a video of themselves uh, and tell me why they deserve to work with Reach Your Peak, my company. And it says three to 10 minutes, whatever. And I, I, I just put this together and two have already come in and they are super qualified because mm -hmm. this system helped do that. I didn't have to stay on the phone for an hour, which I normally would do in the past. Yeah. I just saved myself an hour. It took me 12 to 14 hours to put this thing together, test it, make sure it worked. But now yeah. I'm gonna save myself that amount of time over and over and over again. So oh, totally. did you build that yourself or did you hire somebody? I did, did because yeah, that's yeah. my that's my forte. That was my core competency we're talking about. I was coined yeah. by a, a close friend, one of those friends I was telling you about, called me the automation master. So I said, I'm gonna go with that. I like that one. Nice. <laughs> it's funny. So um I was in college radio when when I was in college. That's redundant. Um <laughs> and I actually built a, a file FileMaker Pro, remember that program, FileMaker Pro database to run the entire radio station. So ingesting records we get from labels, doing the reviews, um, printing out the um, program reports, printing out the, all this stuff. It was awesome. It was awesome. I loved it. Um, but this past year, I ended up learning because I wanted to know it for myself, you know, the how to build the funnel and how to build the automation. And I found myself at the end of the day being like, I just want to do good work for great people. I don't, you know, I, I, I love the philosophy of it, but in my work, I feel like now I know enough to be able to hire somebody to do it for me. And yes. probably that's one of those situations where it's like, okay, what's the first thing that can be handed off? Probably it's going to be building that because I know, I mean, I have a mailing list of an awful lot of people at this juncture, you know, probably North of 600 people from all the podcasts and things I've been on. I don't send them any, I mean, 
if I'm launching a, a challenge course or something like that, I will send a personal email out to all of them. But if they don't open it, do they get something? No. If they if they respond with a certain thing, do they immediately get something else? No. I literally sit there and like look through all the responses and and respond personally to like what it all is. So I do know that that's something that I need to get better about myself. Um, but it's yeah, that's one that overwhelms me. Yeah, it's sure. just part of the journey and another step towards yeah. scaling. I remember over a year ago when I got my first apprentice to help me, it opened up my mind like I never had, I could not believe if I couldn't fathom this. It was like I was solopreneur up until that point and I, I kept saying no to myself to so many things, including technology, because technology yeah. always changes and there's so many pieces. I'm, I'm one person. There's no way I could no way no way i could do this by myself and once i got my first apprentice that opened my brain i said oh my god all i gotta do is get another one and then another one and then however many i need to to fit the bill so i can continue to work on it instead of in it and ultimately to have them create the automations ultimately and yeah. because what you're you're saying you went through the process that's the beautiful part about it because now you know how to communicate with that person in an effective manner to say, this is exactly what I want to do. I know this is possible. You can do this here, there, and there. There might be something new. If there is, let me know, but you know, do it, just make it work. Um, but it's, it's amazing that just getting help. Oh my gosh, what a godsend. So I've been through 11 apprentices. I have four currently, uh, just continue to grow the team and it just, it works. It works. And it's amazing. It's a lot of juggling at first, a lot of learning. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot to it. I go on forever about that part of it, but scaling yeah. is scaling is a big part of uh, of growing a business and what you're doing with your assets, with your experience. That's oh my gosh, I can only imagine uh, your company as it spreads and the word spreads even farther and more people are impacted, more people are getting the exposure they want and deserve. On that note, before we go too far into it, yeah. please let us know in more detail what exactly your agency does. Uh, what do you do for entrepreneurs? You said some things I really like that you're you're approaching or addressing the smaller businesses, not the big, big players. Um, yeah. So what exactly do you do and, and who is your avatar? Yeah, um, so I have two slices of my business. One slice is um, doing brand strategy um, and visibility strategy for startups. That's where that transformative technology thing that I talked to you about comes into play. So these are businesses that are probably between, you know, four and five people. They have their MVP ready to go. They're looking for investors. So helping them get their message ready before they go to investors um, and then helping them start to get um, media attention. And then on the entrepreneur side, I really had an epiphany about a year after starting my agency where I found myself telling entrepreneurs the things that I had always been told. I call it the myths that have been perpetrated by the PR industrial complex. Mm. And those myths include things like, if you don't have a big agency email address, media is not even gonna open your email. If you haven't known somebody in the media for decades, they're not even gonna wanna talk to you. Um, if you don't know how to write in an AP style, if you don't know how to create a clunky press release, you guys, a press release is the worst way to tell a story. <laughs> it is, it's intentionally devoid of excitement, really, because it has to be stripped down um, in order to meet AP standards. Um, so there are just all these kind of myths that the, the PR industrial complex wants that smaller solo business owner to believe about doing their own PR. I am here to tell you that you have the one thing that media wants more than anything. And that is radical authenticity, going back to that, and an unfiltered point of view. So when I'm pitching media and I'm saying, I'm Heather Hawkins and my client is really passionate about blah, blah, blah. You know, there's this little bug in the back of my head that's like, you know, why the, why the filter? Why not just let that media person talk to the person who is passionate? And then I talk to the media and the media literally says, can I just talk to the guy? Like I would way rather just talk to the guy. And look, if you're a big company, if you're a Cliff Bar, if you're a Camelback and media is talking to the executive vice president of sales and the executive vice president of, of product, yeah, you need to have a PR agency. You need to have a filter because you need to stay aligned to that brand. If you're a solo business owner, you're not gonna go off brand to yourself. Your passion is who you are. 
Um, if somebody just teaches you these little tips and tricks about where to find media, how to figure out who's going to want to hear your story, how to package up your story in an of service way, you can go out to media and you can get that media coverage. And I believe that anytime that you're dealing with earned media, where there is a gatekeeper, so there's a reporter who puts you in their story. There's a podcaster who puts you on their show. There's a conference that puts you on the stage to speak. There's something called a halo of endorsement that happens because this trusted media person is giving you a stage and giving you a microphone to talk about yourself and your brand and to tell your story. That doesn't happen if you're placing bylined articles on Business Insider or churning out content on your own blog or going live on Facebook every day. There's something magical that happens when you're actually dealing with that gatekeeper in an earned media setting. Um, so when I work with entrepreneurs, I, I have a six week program where I help them figure out their brand and then figure out what media they should be going out to help them figure out what materials do they need? What kind of stories are going to resonate best with that media? So it's very much like a strategic done with you kind of a, I call it a mentored immersion. Um, and then I do other little things. So I mentioned earlier podcasts, if you are a solo business owner, and you wake up with an opinion, you need to be on podcasts. If you want people joining your list, downloading your lead magnet, engaging you in those kinds of ways, you've got to be on podcasts. You should be on podcasts. You cannot beat it. Um, so I do a couple things teaching people how to be on podcasts. I have a two week group challenge style where it's like 15 minutes of work a day. And by the end of the two weeks, you have your entire pitch engine built out. And then I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching, teaching people how to be on podcasts um, and how to create what they need to move forward in that. You heard it. Heather Hawkins, she's worked with David Bowie, Maroon 5, and so <laughs> many others. Uh, big companies. She's been around the block. She knows what it takes to get you the exposure you want and, and deserve. Uh, that's what I love. You, you've hit all the pieces. You know it so well, obviously. Uh, that no stone is left unturned. Six weeks uh, to transform your business. Uh, that sounds mighty enticing to me personally. Uh, so it should sound the same to everyone else out there who is either an entrepreneur, even an aspiring entrepreneur. So it sounds like you even help those that are solopreneurs as well, uh, which yeah. is phenomenal because there are a lot of those out there. It's difficult to make that transition, or at least it seems like it is, unless you have a little bit of, of hand holding in that area or coaching. But uh, once you've done it, it's phenomenal. But yeah, there's many solopreneurs out there. So God bless you for helping the entrepreneurs that are in that, that stage of their business uh, because uh, there are so few that seem to be out there that really are worth their salt. And I can tell you are. You are definitely worth your salt and more. Uh, I don't even know where that term came from, worth your salt. It doesn't even sound that good. Yeah. But I have to look that up. Must be back in the day when salt was the thing, you know? It might be because I'm still wearing my running clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I keep on checking in the thing to be like, I don't have like dried sweat on my face. <laughs> oh my God, you are so hilarious. I love this. Well, I can't believe this. We're coming on the end of an hour, um, but there is one question I like to ask every single guest expert that comes onto the show. Yeah. I didn't get to hear what this question was beforehand, so I'm okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you sure? So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question. Um, and I ask every entrepreneur, uh, past guest, and they're still alive, so they, they survived. And, <laughs> and it's, it's a, a really deep question, and I love the answers that come as a result of it. But before we do that, I promised everyone that before we hit the end of the show, I'd show them how they could enter to win a five-night stay at a five-star, get that five in there, luxury resort, in Mexico, compliments of powertexting.com um, from my good buddy Jason Nast, who's actually watching us right now on YouTube. How you doing, my friend? Thank you so much. Always there supporting. Love this guy. I truly do. He's like a brother. Uh, and here is how you enter. So everyone, you now have our permission to pull out your phone if you're not already watching on it and enter the following. So put out your, bring out your texting application. Type in the phone number, 661-535-1624. And then in that little message area at the bottom, type in the word PEAK, P-E-A-K, 
and hit that little send button and that will enter you immediately and instantly into our little contest to see who is going to go to Mexico. Compliments again of powertexting.com, Jason Nast, Rhonda, amazing, amazing people. Uh, and by the way, when you do this, when you text that number, you are using the powertexting.com system itself. It's amazing. So every business owner, in my personal opinion, should have this system. It's a great way to communicate. Text is open more than email. I could go on and on. Uh, so go ahead, text. Peak to the number 661-535-1624. Do that now and then come right back because we've got that big question for Heather Hawkins, who is now probably literally getting salt from the sweat that's going down her bra, bra brow that is, you know, leaving that trail. Um, here's the cool thing, uh, Heather. I don't want to, I don't want you to be any nerve. I know you're a pro and you, this is nothing phases you, uh, but really, the answer to this question, there is no such thing as a wrong answer. It doesn't exist. In fact, the exact opposite is true. The only, the only correct answer is yours because it is all unique right. to every individual. So all, all that pressure, it's gone. You can just ah, wait off the shoulders and now we can have fun. So now are you ready for the big, the big boom question? <laughs> I am. All right, here we go. Heather Hawkins. How do you define success? How do I define success? <sighs> That's a tough one. You know, I, I define, so it's definitely an intrinsic thing. So I wouldn't define success by hitting any number. I wouldn't define it by having anything. Um, I, I define it as just like a feeling of inner knowing that you're in the right place doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and the great thing about that is that you can bring that with you into any situation. So you can succeed in any situation as long as you find a way to work through it in a way that's in alignment with your inner compass. Um, and for me, you know, that means how can I be of value? How can I make the world a better place? How can I um, just kind of know in each moment that I made the choices that felt right to me, um, which also means making choices that, that I feel are, are good for other people. Um, so that's how I define success. It's just an, it's an inner feeling of ease and peace and alignment um, that lets me know that I'm doing what I ought to be doing. And I believe that if you do that, all the other things that you might put on your creation board and you might put in your annual goals on your you know, business spreadsheet, all that's going to take care of itself. It's just a matter of moment by moment. Am I in alignment? Am I doing what I know I should be doing? Am I doing something that's, that's in accordance with my higher goals and intentions? Fantastic and true to form, as unique as everyone before you. Uh, and that's what I love about this question. Uh, it's so beautiful because every person has, including you, has such amazing uh, responses to that. And, you know, you're talking about alignment, doing what you're doing. Uh, and really the reason, the purpose for all that, you said several things that really stood out to be of value, to be of value, not just to yourself. And you said it to be of value uh, for others, for other people, and to make the world a better place, not to make Heather Hawkins' life a better place, but the world a better place. And that's another common trait, another pattern of successful entrepreneurs. They, are, they have a heart serving mentality uh, that they're driven so hard, like Heather, to help other people. That is why, if you want the key to success, I think that's it. I mean, if you really wanted one key to success, it is serving others. And I mean from the heart, meaning you want to help them, not just because, well, Brian said, if I serve others, I'm going to get successful. That's not why you do it. You do it because that's what you want to do. You want to help others. I think most humans inherently want to do that. Now, how, how badly do you want it? How badly do you want to help others? And yes, you will get rewarded along the way if you are going about it with true passion, in my humble opinion, just because I've seen it work so many times. Um, we have another gift uh, to give away that I wanted to turn it over to you, Heather, 
so you can describe it. I'll bring you up uh, next to your website and uh, let you take it away and see what you got for the wonderful peeps out there. Oh, before I do that, uh, Jason, <laughs> he caught the fact that I said sweat rolling down your bra. I was just thinking of a Hawaiian guy, okay, bra. Yo, bra, you know, the bro, sorry. Uh, he caught that. I, yeah, I caught myself and said bro, uh, or brow, sorry. <laughs> but thanks anyway, Jace. I love you, buddy. It's all falling apart. I know, I tell you. Uh, all right, let's get on to uh, your your wonderful gift. Yeah. So go ahead, take it away. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I have a couple things for the listeners. If you go to heatherhawkins.live, um, you can enter your email address and I have a free video e-course that's going to walk you through a bunch of the stuff we talked about today, which is creating your brand, defining your avatar, figuring out what media is going to be right for you. And it's going to give you some actionable steps that you can take right now in the next week, including the easiest place for you to go to find media that's looking for you. It's a free resource. They literally say, can anybody talk to me about mind body business and brian could say i am the perfect person to talk to you and you can get some mass coverage really quickly using that resource so if you download that free visibility e-course um that'll be awesome for you and then i also wanted to offer a listener of brian's the opportunity to work with me um since i don't have another podcast group session happening until probably October or November, I'm just going to go ahead and take somebody on as a one on one client. So over the course of three coaching calls, we will get your podcast program being a guest on podcasts specifically um, up and running. So we'll create your guest sheet. We'll figure out what topics you should be talking about. We'll help you identify which podcasters to go out to. Um, I will provide you with all the templates that you need in order to start pitching yourself to be a guest on podcasts. So that's one person um and brian i don't know how people usually collect entries for that i don't know if it's you know maybe just if i look at the people that join my list in the next period of time or if you have a way on yours for people who comment on the videos i can go in and see who did that i don't know how most people usually yeah, one, um, one thing you can do is just have them uh facebook messaging messenger you and say okay. i was on the mind body business show and i want to entry into that um that wonderful one-on-one -on -one coaching program you have. All right. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Um, <laughs> Facebook.com slash Heather Hawkins biz. I will make a very cryptic post and pin it to the top of my page that says, mm. if you are here to do a thing, do the thing below. And then anybody who posts below and says, enter me, I will go ahead and um, choose from those people. Sound good? That sounds great. Fantastic. And don't forget heatherhawkins.live, not dot com. So it's H E A T H E R, followed by H A W K I N S dot live. And that's dot where live. you see what you see on the screen now. That's her website. Yeah. Enter your email address there and go to her Facebook page, Heather Hawkins Biz, uh, is her username there. And look for yeah. her recent post that's going to be out very soon after yeah, this I'll show. Yeah, I'll do it as soon as I get off here. Yeah. As soon as Brian lets her go, she will yep. do that. <laughs> and uh, Jason's saying, me, 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 me. Yes, definitely. Uh, um, next time, we will integrate power texting into that and do another keyword and have people enter that way. So that would be another yeah. awesome. Yeah. In fact, you know, nah, I'll, I'll let you, uh, I'll let, I'll let you uh, take the, the rain on this one. That's good. I was just going to say we could double up on the vacation, but uh, we don't have them win both. But um, let's just stick with that. I want people to reach out to you and connect with you. And is that the best way? What is the best way for them? Is it through your website here that we yeah. had on just a moment ago? Um, yes. Yeah. Or you know what? You guys, honestly, just Heather at Elevation-Strategy.com is my personal email address. You guys are welcome to email me. I'm on Facebook Messenger all the time. Um, so it's easy to find me. And I'm, again... This is kind of the passion side of my business. So I love helping people through this stuff. I love helping them see how it feels to see their name in print and see media repeating back the them that they deserve to be. Mm. Um, so hit me up and we'll we'll find a way to work together. You heard her, hit her up, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, thank you once again so much. You've been such an amazing, amazing guest. What value you've brought. I've had a ton of fun to boot with all the sweating and salt and everything that's been going on. 
just been a great, great experience. There we go. Yes. <laughs> sure glad we don't have that scratch and sniff technology I just know. yet. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, on behalf of Heather Hawkins, this is Brian Kelly for the Mind Body Business Show. For all of you that have watched uh, live and those of you that are going to watch at the recorded uh, video and those listening on podcasts, we appreciate you too and your time. Until next time, we will see you once again on the Mind Body Business Show. That's it for now. Have a great one and be blessed. Take care, everybody. Thank you for watching and listening. This has been the Mind Body Business Show with Brian Kelly.